everyone, Coach Jeff from Team PRS Fit. Um, today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about better running form. Um, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of talk in the running communities and in the triathlon communities about better running form and minimalism. Um, the book Born to Run came out and it talked about how we need to, to get back to a better body position and a more natural um, running gait through minimalism in shoes um, or barefoot running. The, in, in essence, barefoot running, when you take off your shoes, and I would take off my shoes and show you today, but I'm on the track, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, you know, barefoot running is actually gonna put you in a position where your body needs to be. Um, you're gonna be a little bit more forward in your, in your body position, there's gonna be a little bit more tilt in your body position, and you're actually gonna get your foot into a position underneath your center of mass that allows you to protect your body and naturally move through a running motion. You know, for years the shoe companies were manufacturing shoes that had elevated heels and were forcing us into a heel mid-stance toe gait, which in actuality is your walking gait. A running gait is dropping down in the midfoot area and lifting your foot up in the air. Therefore, your foot is on the ground a lot less time and there's a lot less um, You know, one of the things we like to talk about in a, first off is body position. You know, as a runner or a triathlete or whatever you may be, if you're a basketball player or a football player, we all have a, uh, we all get into what's known as your athletic stance. And even as a runner, you should be thinking about your athletic stance. And what's an athletic stance? Well, it's very, very simple. An athletic stance is straight feet, straight knees, straight hips, straight shoulders. This is body alignment. You want body alignment when you're doing anything. If your body is out of align any way, it causes an imbalance. And it's imbalances that can cause injury. You know, um, they talk about heel striking. Well, you know, a lot of times there's you know, a lot of talk. Should I be heel striking? Should I be forefoot striking? You know, it's very interesting. Your heel is a loose adapter. If I come down on the ground with my leg extended in front of me and my heel striking the ground, you'll see that there's a lot of movement that can happen. My foot can roll inward, my foot can roll outward. I mean, there's just a lot of things that can happen if I have that heel out in front of me and no balance and no stability. You know, if I take my foot and I just move it back to here, you can see, I try to move that lower leg is a lot more stable as I'm on that midfoot area um, because there's no loose adapter. Bottom line is, look, if you take off your shoes and you start to run, you're gonna run like you did with a kid like when you were a kid. You're gonna run on your forefeet um, and you're gonna protect that heel or your calcaneus from slamming into the ground. So why not do that when you have shoes on? Um, and there's an easy way to do that. There's been a lot of talk about G running and natural running and all the mechanics that go into it. What Diane and I have coined is, is kind of a form, you know, we're both certified natural running coaches and what we wanna to bring to you is an easy form running style. How do you get to that easy form running style? Some very basic drills that you can do to get to that easy form running style. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to do some of those drills. And as we move through the drills, take the time to practice them. Drills are the key to anything. You know, you do drills when you do swim work. You do drills when you do bicycle work. You should do your drills when you're doing running. The more drills that you do, the better runner you can become. We like to do drills as part of our warm-up before a run. We like to do drills as part of our cool down for a run. We're very big on form. You know, everyone says, well, does form really reduce injuries? Can better form make me faster? And the answer to that is yes and possibly. Um, look, if your form is better, you're gonna reduce your impact. I'm gonna show you through these drills how you get to impact reduction through better running form. Um, the less impact you have, the less opportunity you have for overuse injuries. That's just logic. Will it make you faster? You know, here's the things that make you faster. Good training, consistent training, proper rest and recovery, and yes, good form. It's an ingredient to making you faster. Look, you don't bake a cake without the eggs and expect the cake to come out right. Um, so. Good form alone, will it make you faster? No, I mean, you have to add the rest of the ingredients. There has to be proper training, consistent training, focused training, as well as periods of rest and recovery, and the good form thrown in there can make you a faster runner. Look, bottom line is, folks, running does not cause injuries. 
bad form can cause injuries. So let's take a look. We're going to go through some drills. Follow me through these drills. Maybe you want to get up and practice them with me. I'm going to teach you how to run a little bit easier with less impact, nice quiet feet, no sound on the ground we like to, we like to say at Team PRS Fit. So let's take a look and let's go do some drills. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is how to get your body in the right position so that you're able to lift your legs and let your feet drop down below your center of mass upon impact rather than having that foot out in front of you with your leg extended. You know, this is a lot simpler than a lot of people make it. Again, we have good body alignment. My feet are straight, my knees are straight, my hips are straight, my shoulders are straight. So if I turn to this angle, you can see that I'm very erect right now. And I fall from here, from my waist to my chin. This is the way, and I'll turn this way. This is the way to know that your head is in the right position. Place your thumb, your finger on your collarbone, finger up, rest your chin. Now my eyes are focused straight ahead. Whether I'm running up a hill or down a hill, this is where I want my head. If my head gets back, my body gets back. If my head gets forward, my body gets forward into a bad body position. So when you hear people say run tall and erect, tall and erect is from your, your navel area, your waist area and your hips to your chin. Here I'm tall and erect. So as I turn sideways, you can see I'm nice and erect from here to here. Right now I'm very, very straight. So what do I want to do to get into a perfect or a better running position? If I put my arms up, you can see that my body automatically is cast back. If I throw my arms back, you can see that now my body is in a nice forward lean. My head is still erect. I'm just slightly bent, very slightly bent at the waist. I still have great foot alignment, great knee placement, great hip placement, straight shoulders, straight head. I put these arms back, it's almost like a ski jumper. They come down the, they come down the ramp, they're ramping, ramping, ramping. I throw myself out over the skis and my lean comes from my ankles. So I have this lean, I'm out there, my arms are back, I bend my arms, and now I have body position. So when I lift my leg and I drop it back down, it's coming right down under my center of mass. That's how you create body position. I'll show you these steps once again. Your feet are straight, knees are straight. Hips are straight, shoulders are straight. My head is in the balanced position looking straight in front of me. I'm erect from my waist to the chin. I turn, I want to get into body position, now I'm straight. I push my elbows back. I push my elbows back, it opens up my chest area so I'm able to get more oxygen. I keep my head straight, which allows me again to maximize oxygen intake and keep my body from bending if I'm looking down or leaning if I'm looking back. One of the other things to remember is if my head is straight, it's not down, it's not up, I'm not restricting oxygen intake. Dropping my head just this much can actually reduce my ability to take in oxygen by 50%. So I'm keeping my head nice and straight. So here I am, good body position, nice and straight. I'm ready to go. Now my feet are gonna come down below my center of mass. Next drill that I wanna show you and this is a great way to get the feel for your feet landing and getting a little bit of heel load. Heel load is very important. And what do I mean by heel load? Okay, if I'm landing on my midfoot and my heel slightly settles, you can actually see and you'll feel, if you practice this with me, you get your foot up into that midfoot area and you let that heel slightly drop. You will feel the muscles engage in the back of your leg. It's like almost like a rubber band. I got that heel load, and guess what? When I snap that rubber band, pop, my leg comes up. Heel load and pop. This is one of the very keys. Your body has built-in natural elasticity. When you let that foot drop and that heel load pop, it comes right back up. Um, you know, it's almost one of the great ways to demonstrate your body's natural elasticity is if I put my fingers on my chest like this, I pull this finger out, I snap it back. Pull the finger out, snap it back. That's my body's natural elasticity and work. If I pull my finger out like that and push it back, it takes a lot more work because I'm fighting the natural motion of my body and I have to create this movement. So if I'm in this position, my body's here, I lift my leg, I land midfoot, my heel slightly drops and touches, it 
explode, bang, it pops back up. And this is how I want my running motion to work. So what's a great way to practice that? Well, what we like to do, and to, to show an example of how this works, is jump a little rope. Here I am, I'm absorbing, okay, with my ankles. I'm nice and relaxed, I jump a little faster, and what's happening is, as you can see, if I turn sideways, I'm landing midfoot, getting that load, and I'm practicing this. Here's the amazing, this is the amazing thing. I've already, just doing this, I can do this all day, and it's reducing impact. I don't feel this impact at all, but as you'll slowly see, and plainly see, when I land on my heels, what happens? The jarring impact all the way up from my heels to my face. That's why we don't want to do this. Okay, so here I am bouncing. Nice elasticity, nice load, shock. Perfect example of how heel striking, driving that heel into the ground, causes a continual breaking action, what we want to do. So drill number one is just get out there and you should all try doing this. Do it faster, same thing, doesn't matter, do it higher, just let your ankles and your natural elasticity provide the energy. So that's drill number one. Drill number two, what do we like to do with drill number two? High kicks or butt kicks with your feet. Do you know, if you go to the track, most people go to the track and naturally run track workouts under four feet. So many track workouts are great for practicing form. So here we are, high butt kicks. Okay, look again, you can see my feet. And you can hear my feet, how quiet they are. Why? Because I'm lifting from here. They're coming down under my center of mass. I'm landing on my four feet and I'm lifting. I do this, high knee raises. Again, no impact, no sound. No sound on the ground. The less sound I have on the ground, the better my form is. A key to good running, no sound on the ground. Listen to your feet. Your feet will tell you what your form is. Another drill we like to do, some skipping drills. And why do we do the skipping drills? Because you get the feel, the lift from the core and pushing it that back down. I'm lifting, I'm pushing. I'm lifting, I'm pushing. Take a look. See? Back down under my center of mass. You can do that slow. No heel strike. Good body position. Nice high skip. Nice lift and a good drive. In order to be a faster runner, body lean is the key. In order to be a more comfortable runner, body position is the key. Lifting your feet is a key. You know, when we talk about heel striking, and we talk about easy form running, there's a couple of ways to strike your heel. Obviously, there's a bad way, and there's a way that's not so bad. I'm not so sure there's a good way, but there's a way that's not so bad. And as easy form running coaches, we like to say, correct it to the point where it's comfortable. Don't overthink it. A few very basic rules of thumb. Light, quiet feet, comfortable, and natural, without thinking about it. Make it easy. If my heel is out here in front of me, you know, many people, they get their leg in this position and they swing their leg out in front of them and it lands down here. Here is where I have braking. Great example of what happens when I brake. I hit my heel, I have jar all the way up through here. But even more so, now I go to a second impact point and I'm here, so I have more impact. And then I have to get out of there, which means I have to engage these muscles again to lift out of there to start this whole motion again. Very inefficient, very impactful. What you want to think about 
is the example. If I'm heel striking, I've just impacted the ground. Here's my hip. Now I have to roll to here. So I've moved from there to there with my hip as I impact again. And now I'm way out here before I get my foot off the ground and start my next motion forward. So I'm on the ground for a very long period of time with a lot of impact. You just saw that my hip went from here to here before it got off the ground. However, if I'm striking and lifting with my foot underneath my center of mass, look at this. Bang, I'm here and I'm off the ground. I'm here and I'm off the ground. It's not three steps. It's not impact, impact, dig and lift. It's just pop and lift and I'm off the ground. So it, what it does reduces my foot time on the ground by 60%, reduces my impact by about 44%. And that's very, very key to running successfully. But the body position that we've talked about, and if you watch, I'm gonna walk down here a little bit and you can see as I come back towards you, if I'm walking and I start to run and I have an erect body with no body lean, and even if I'm striking right, you can see the vertical lift in my run. And when I talk about the vertical lift, I talk about how I go up and down. Now, if I start out the same way, here's the lift, and I lean, you see, same motion, but less oscillation. And why do I talk about oscillation? Well, with oscillation, on a 10K, the average 150 pound man or woman in a 10K, if you oscillate two inches throughout the entire 10K, it's like lifting 84 tons. So when you get that body lean, and I'll show you one more time, to take that oscillation out, guess what? I'm lifting a lot, weight, a lot less weight over a 10K. So I'm reducing my workload for that entire period of time. If I can reduce it to one inch, I've cut it in half. If I can reduce it to almost no vertical oscillation, I'm really saving a lot of energy. So if I go back here one more time, and you see, okay, I'm bouncing, I'm erect, I lean and I go, and I'm a lot smoother. Again, that's something you need to practice, taking the oscillation with the body lean. So, easiest way. I always like to get down to what's the easiest way to become an easy form runner or a more natural, fluid, efficient runner. We like to do what we call a marching drill. I'm standing here, and again, knees straight, feet straight, hips straight, shoulders straight, head, eyes straight forward. I'm here, I push my elbows back, okay? I can drop my hands like I'm out of tension. Pretend you have a backpack on your back. That backpack leans me forward. Put the arms back. I bring it up. Now I'm in a nice, perfect body position. And I start to march. I just start to lift my legs. I start to march. And then I can just turn it in a little bit more. And the more body lean, the faster I'll go. That's the easiest way to practice becoming an easy form runner more natural runner, more fluid runner, less impactful runner. Again, I say, is this the best way to run? And why is this the best way to run? Yes. Light, quiet feet mean less impact. High cadence, again, less braking. If my feet are popping off the ground, not driving into the ground, saving a lot of energy, saving a lot of impact, reducing the opportunity for overuse injury. Practice your drills. They're simple, they're easy. Practice them before a run, practice them after a run. Sooner it will come to you, practice the marching drill. The easiest way to make the transition is to practice the marching drill. And what does it look like when it all comes together? I guess I'll give you a little bit of an example. I'm gonna jog down here a little.
Again, what we see is very fluid motion. Nice, easy form running. It's very fluid motion. Nice, quiet feet. No impact. And the key, no sound on the ground. Listen to your feet. Your feet will tell you the story of how you're running. Other than that, we like to say here at Team PRS Fit, be healthy, train smart, have fun. Our website is www.prsfit.com. Email me with questions, prsfit at gmail.com. And take care, we'll see you soon.